Das I'm just I'm just gonna start so just that we're not gonna delay the next talks. Um, so, hello, good morning. Uh, if you want to watch this thing, just please have a seat or hang around. Um, well, uh, thank you very much for coming to this uh, small improvised talk about uh, something. Um, Tom asked me to do this a couple of days ago, and they, they just wanted to fill the slot here this morning. So I thought I, it would be cool if I would like if I would show what I'm currently working on. <clears throat> uh, so just a little background. Oh, wait. I have this little piece of technology here. That's amazing. Wow. So uh, just to give a short introduction of who I am, um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm I'm Andy. I've uh, I'm a Blender user for about 15 years now. So I'm um, pretty old, and uh, I've, I've worked on the open movie projects, Elf and Scream, Big Buck Bunny, Tears of Steel, Caminandas, Grandi Lama, and uh, the last thing I did was uh, Creature Factory 2, which is now out on the Blender Cloud. And uh, um, actually, yeah, the thing I wanted to start with was kind of embarrassing. This is actually my first, this is a faithful representation of my first Blender image. It, it was actually a movie of a spaceship that docks into a space station, which you can see being represented by this little uh, uh, plane there. So um, that was like, that was actually 15 years ago. And uh, when I started out with Blender, uh, it was of course really, uh, you know, it was just really just 90s technology and everything, but I was completely amazed by the things you could do I mean, like every one of you who started out with it, like you, oh my God, I can I can make stars and I can make, yeah, <laughs> and more stars. By the way, actually, I had to fake that stars background because now the stars feature isn't in, in Blender anymore. But well, um, anyway, I was completely amazed uh, with uh, what you can do in the virtual world, and uh, I was actually like back then I was in high school, I was uh, making little, I mean. Like that generation, I was uh, completely obsessed with uh, dinosaurs and monsters, and uh, so I I made little uh, little puppet movies with uh, with dinosaurs in school, and I actually blew, uh, made a model of my school and blew it up uh, for a movie. It looked completely terrible, I assure you, but yeah. So um, I I always liked you know I always liked the virtual world, but also do something in the physical world. So um, a couple of Years ago, I actually did this uh, short movie, uh, which is a mixture of stop motion animation and uh, Blender. It's about 19 min minutes long. Uh, it's called Omega. I actually didn't do it alone. Um, I had a very talented uh, team of people, like 20 uh, other students, uh, because I'm a student, um, uh, who, who made this thing work, like this completely ridiculous world with. Uh, made out of uh, stop motion puppets, uh, foam, uh, trash, and things like that. And that was actually the first uh, project for me of that kind, like going back, because before that, I, I basically just worked in the virtual world. I only did Blender, and I actually uh, stepped back from drawing a little bit, because I, I, did, draw, uh, I did draw a lot when I was a little kid, and uh, so, this was kind of the opportunity for me to go back into uh, something a bit more practical. But also at the same time, I had the chance to, uh, to do something um, with the software that I love the most, which is Blender, uh, and, and kind of uh, elevated what it, like, to, uh, from what it could have been just with, uh, like, with practical effects. Um, so, I'm currently uh, I'm I'm studying media arts. I'm uh, mostly finished, and uh, the thing I'm tr uh, I'm talking about here is my graduation project actually, and uh, uh, it's uh, probably going to be finished end of November. So the thing I also do next to Blender is kind of uh, a bit strange. I also do uh, electronic electronic music mostly. 
I, I really like performing in front of people on the stage with hardware synthesizers and drum machines. Uh, so a couple of years back, I started actually making things on my own. Like, I'm, I'm a complete idiot. I don't know, like, I know only really small, like, little things about that kind of stuff. I know how synthesizers work, and I know some software. I started uh, programming and uh, processing, uh, which is a Java-ish kind of uh, environment for making graphics. And uh, so the transition was really easy to go uh, to Arduino, which is not Java anymore. It's kind of more like uh, C and C++. C? No, it's C. Um, so I started making like these little projects. I I made this uh, I made this uh, sort of hybrid synthesizer, which is a uh, which you can see it up there in the upper left corner, which is a mixture of a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino Mega. The Arduino Mega Mega just does the uh, the buttons and the encoder readings and everything. It does the sequencing and the time stepping so that the time is pretty accurate. And then the Raspberry Pi in it is just there to provide the synth, ar the synth ar architecture. Um, and the, the synthesizer is just basically software. It's using pure data. And it's just taking MIDI from the Arduino. So it's nothing really, really complicated. I also did a uh, synth upgrade. I upgraded my uh, Dave Smith Instruments Tetra with additional buttons because that was the original synthesizer, so I just thought, okay, it, it has like eight buttons or something, uh, eight knobs, and I wanted to uh, to uh, give me more uh, more functions, so I added those uh, I added those uh, tensiometers there, and little things like that. Um, so yeah, I kind of like grew to become this uh, sort of uh, 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 making uh, nerd person who's also using Blender and thing was, uh, I, I was always thinking about how, I, how can I uh, combine these things again, like, and of course the perfect opportunity for that is uh, using 3D printing, uh, which is, I mean, it's not, it's not really an exact, exactly a new technology, but uh, it's always amazed me, and I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to you know, explore what I could do uh, combining Blender and uh, this stuff, which I don't know exactly what it is. So uh, one year ago, actually, I, I just started thinking about my graduation project, had some, some crazy ideas, and I actually, originally, I wanted to build a robot of some sort, but I couldn't really find a use for, for a robot. I mean, it's cool to have a robot, sure, but uh, what does it do? And uh, I guess there has to be some kind of justification for it. So uh, I kind of, uh, I, I was always interested in, uh, in nature, uh, kind of the, the interac interaction of uh, humans and nature. So I thought, let's make something uh, that's, that's a mixture of organic and mechanic. So uh, I started uh, thinking about this idea of a botanical garden that's uh, made with uh, 3D pr printed plants. and. Uh, uh, have some kind of way of uh, with the viewer to interact with that kind of stuff on a really basic level. Um, again, I'm not uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't. I'm also not a programmer. I uh, all the things I can do are just really on the most basic level. So I thought of uh, of making uh, of making this little uh, garden thing, which basically just consists of uh, uh, these are now seven, but now there are six uh, spheres, and uh, on these spheres there are plants that they are just planted or growing out of these spheres, and uh, the idea from that came from uh, there's a uh, Japanese uh, technique for for actually for for growing plants out of moss balls. It's called uh, kokodama, and uh, it's pretty amazing. People have these uh, little greenhouses, and they have these uh, moss balls hanging from hanging from the ceiling, and uh, all these plants growing out of it. And it's actually pretty amazing to see like these huge plants growing out of this little moss ball. So I, I thought that would be kind of an interesting image to to explore. And uh, so um, my idea is that um, I'm going to have this uh, this room, which is completely dark, 
And uh, in it, there are these floating or hanging spheres. Some of them could be on the ground or could be on different layers. And, and on each sphere, there is a different type of plant. So I kind of wanted to, uh, I wanted to limit myself first. So, um, I mean, there's, there's literally millions of possibility with this kind of uh, subject. And even in, in, in Blender, you can, you can do anything. So I really wanted to limit myself to only like really basic type of plants. So I have carnivorous plants, uh, fern, and flowers are as the three main like interacting objects. And everything else is kind of just on a lower interaction level. Um, and what I mean by that is that basically just like to make things easier for me, because I, mean, I just have a limited time frame on this, only the top of these things, the fern, the, uh, the flowers, and the, the carnivorous plants, they're going to move, basically. So, um, and the rest, like, first ones are going to be a mechanic, and the rest, which is, uh, right now, it's, uh, I think only the mushroom sphere made it to final completion right now, but I, I have mushrooms and uh, little uh, sand uh, deserty plants, they're called succulents, I think, uh, and uh, another thing which I haven't completely finished yet. Mm. So uh, that's the rendering of uh, of how this could look like, just to give you an, a basic idea. I, I mean, this is really quick for a presentation at school. Mm. So all these plants are just, they're not going to be painted. It's all going to be a, a very sort of clean, artsy uh, aesthetic, it's all uh, just white plastic, and uh, the, each of these spheres inside has like has that well, has the brains in it basically to make that whole thing work. So um, on the most basic level, each of the spheres is going to have uh, uh, is going to emit light and is also going to re react to light. Um, well, that's pr probably one of the easiest things that you can do uh, using using hardware, just stick a light sensor in it, shine a light at it, it does something, uh, have it emit light when it does something else. But uh, then you get this kind of interaction, at least I hope it does, like when you have multiple of these spheres and they have different cycles of light, uh, they're, they're probably going to interact with each other on some level, depending on the brightness. So each of the spheres is going to have uh, 24 LEDs. Um, and uh, there's also going to be a speaker in the bottom. Uh, it's going to emit sound. So each of them are go uh, going to emit sound and light, and they're going to react to light. Um, uh, how does that work? Well, it's also really, really simple. Um, each of the spheres has an Arduino Leonardo, Leonardo, Leonardo uh, which is Leonardo. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't speak Italian. So, <clears throat> um, uh, which is just out of cost reasons. I mean, the, the, the Arduino Uno uh, just costs about, I don't know, like 30 bucks or something, and the Leonardo, Leonardo is uh, about uh, the 25 or 20, 23, I don't know. So it's just less, and the, the, uh, the chip is a little surface mount thing, so it's probably a bit cheaper that way. Um, and uh, also there, there is an LED driver chip, um, which uh, handles all the, the uh, pulse width modulation for the LEDs. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to do any elaborate soldering with this thing. I don't, didn't want to work out circuits, circuits and things like that. I had so many things on my plate already with the printing, which I'm coming to do next, um, that I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So uh, yeah, two things, uh, LED chip, Arduino, and uh, third is a sound generator chip for uh, each of them, which is also just basically an Arduino, uh, but uh, it's a more, it's a cheaper version. It's it's actually an Adafruit Pro Trinket, which uses the 80 mega chip, which uses a compatible 80 mega chip, which is on the Arduino, which uh, lets me use the same sound libraries because the sound is generated on the fly. Uh, is that clear, or am I just talking gibberish right now? Uh, okay, no, that's okay. Right, cool. Anyway, it's it's really simple. So so there, it's just imagine a dark room. Uh, you have a tor you have a flashlight. 
and there is sound coming out of these plants, just little tones. Like each of the, uh, the flower pots basically has one tone, and when they all kind of sing in unison, they're, they're going to form chords and something like that. Um, and so I started out uh, just being crazy, and uh, I'm, I started modeling plants in Blender which is uh, something I quite enjoy because I don't, you don't have to think about it very much because plants are, uh, they have some really aesthetic shapes and most of the structure that, uh, that's, that underlines them are, uh, is mathematics. So uh, you just have to type in the right num numbers, press R and uh, some degree that uh, uh, pops up in nature every once in a while and then you have a plant. So, um, I'm going time wise. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's that's the, the the succulent sphere, which is actually just a, a, a two thirds sphere, which is going to be on the ground because they're ground plants. They're all going to emit light and sound. Uh, that's uh, that's the mushroom sphere, which is my favorite for some reason because I really like these cute little things going out, and they're all going to have different size. So this is what this one is like, a little sphere that has these huge mushrooms uh, popping out which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, there is uh, one of the more elaborate things, which is the carnivorous plants. Uh, and these are, I mean, they, they, they kind of have to fit together with, with each other. But uh, I'm also aware that uh, like, if I combine two things, one that is static and one that is uh, mechanic and moving, uh, there's going to be some differences, even like when you do when you manufacture them, because uh, yeah, you have to design them differently when they move, obviously. So um, I'm gonna have five five of these uh, little like how do you call them? These uh, five little strands of plants, and they have uh, this uh, dug at the top that opens and closes. Anyway, uh, so if you shine a light at them they're going to close and inside there's LEDs and it's going to appear as if the light has been captured by the plant. It's going to you know, like swallow them. Like. Um, right, and uh, that's, that's my design for the flowers, which are also just, I mean, on an interaction level, it's pretty basic. If you shine a light at them, they're going to open. And there's going to be an LED in the top and they're going to glow or whatever. Really simple stuff, but I just, I was really interested in uh, like what happens if I put all these things in a room and what ha happens if people interact with these. I have no idea. So um, I just have like 10 minutes left. Okay, I'm gonna open, are you, are you interested in the blend, blend file? I'm just gonna open this blend file, maybe. I'm going to try to see if this microphone works as well, and it does beautifully. And uh, so, all right, you've probably seen the presentation about 3D printing yesterday, so I don't have to do any more of the basic stuff. You all know 3D printing probably and some of the constraints of it. I thought I knew, does it work actually? was. Hello. Oh. Yes? Does that work? Okay. I'm just going to talk really, I, I hope you guys on the internet hear me. Anyway, so I thought I knew Oh yeah, let's let's dim the lights. I can also switch that theme here. I thought I knew everything about 3D printing. I mean, the basics are just you have to design a non-manifold mesh that has uh, no openings, and then you're set. Basically, you can print anything, right? Right? So, uh, <laughs> well, well, as long as it kind of adheres to, uh, to physics. I mean, you have to make sure that uh, that it doesn't you know, that things are not too small, that it doesn't break during printing. Um, and also the, the, the goal I had was uh, to print this only with FDM printers, like uh, the 
things that are like glorified glue guns, you know. They just squirt some kind of uh, plastic on, on the thing and then it disappears. You know. uh, so yeah, uh, this was actually one of the first things I, I, I did, which was design this plant. Uh, that kind of So I was trying to think of the, mechan uh, the mechanism behind this. And this is just really a basic setup. Uh, there is a driver that drives the rotation of the pedals uh, to make that kind of thing work. In the middle, I thought, OK, let's have these, uh, these little pulleys here. And somehow, uh, using a Bowden tube or something, uh, I'm going to have a server underneath, underneath the plant that, uh, s that pulls that string. And here, I'm going to have some kind of rubber thing that pulls them back. So I only have push-pull action, which is something really simple, right? Well, uh, first, well, <laughs> you're laughing already, but back then I thought, well, let's just try this, OK? Um, first thing I did when I, this is how it came back from printing. <laughs> you can see uh, I was kind of scratching my head here, and I thought, OK, well, it's going to be less exciting than I thought. Um, so yeah, I really had to think about, like, make, don't make things too small. Don't design ridiculous kind of, uh, like, too many joints here. There are just way too many joints here, and uh, uh, that's never going to work. It's all going to break. And uh, so I went back to the drawing bar board, and I actually thought, OK, now I have to make everything flat. Because, uh, I mean, printing on a flat bed is really simple. You just, uh, it, it works beautifully. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any support. So just make everything flat. Right, but then where's the, like, you basically you just, the design looks like paper craft. And you can just do the same using, I don't know, laser cutting or uh, machining or something like that. Um, this uh, looks like that um, and again I want I really want to have like I wanted this to be as simple as possible so uh, I just wanted to have one servo about four pounds per flat it's just a micro servo it's very thin uh, it's really easy to drive that uh, with an RV or do some uh, TWM also with modulation and uh, yeah and, and I, I have just a bunch of them so um, I one, one morning, I thought of this little thing here that, uh, if you think about it, it's, it's actually very simple. You have just one thing that turns, and these little, these little pulleys here pull the leaves in. And if it opens, it just opens. I actually made, the first one I made had eight petals, petals and uh, I ended up just making five because that was easier to print. And kind of, I liked it. Uh, I like this kind of star shape. So uh, yeah, and uh, to to test this, I just like I scribbled something on paper, and then uh, uh, like I showed it to my girlfriend, and she said, "No, that's not possible. It's 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 no, that's not going to work." And she built it in Lego, and then we found out it kind of works. And uh, next, I I built this in Blender, and this is really also just simple. I mean, this one is uh, the driver for the rotation of these pedals here. And uh, with, them, with, with that, I can just control all of them. That, there's no simulation or something, because it's really a simple, uh, simple mechanism. And then these little pulleys, they're just, uh, they're just tracked to you know, some end points that are floating in the air. Something really simple. And, uh, Going to 3D printing, I only had to I only had to pull some some of the parts together, like this platform, which houses the see that which houses the servo, which has to be one continuous thing, uh, and then I'm good to go. Um, so going back to my presentation here, button. Um, so what am I printing on currently? Um, 
I have the big uh, fortune of oh, hold on, of uh, being at a, a media arts school, so we have some printers. Uh, but it was it kind of really bothered me that I didn't have access to them all the time because with this kind of stuff you really you really want to tinker every day. You want to see if something works and then just imme immediately send it, slice it, uh, slice it, send it to the printer and have it pop up in front of you. So uh, me and a, uh, and a couple of friends uh, actually bought this printer up there in the in the upper left corner. Uh, it's called it's not really common. It's called a Hadron Ortbot. It's uh, supposedly it's a, a printer bot design, design which uh, builds on Maker Slide, which are these awesome aluminum profiles. That uh, and and in the middle there is this this uh, uh, Mark Seven MakerBot extruder there. Um, so all this thing, like the, all this stuff, was really built on uh, technology that was available, and that is open source, by the way. And then we also have the Ultimaker 2 and two MakerBot uh, two Ultimaker original and one, uh, actually we have three MakerBots and those things break all the time. So I only ended up using this one. Uh, yeah, I, I was only I only ended up the, uh, using the Replicator Generation 5, which had filament jams all the time. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't operate it. It was the the guy who kind of maintained this whole room. Um, but mainly. Only like most of that stuff was just printed on the org bot, and uh, um, yeah, I just basically I was really I mean once I figured out all the things I needed and I figured out the constraints, it was kind of just really easy going. I could just sit there in the morning, drink some coffee, and make a mushroom, and uh, <laughs> and and, and <laughs> well, that kind of sounds weird, you know. <laughs> Anyway, um, and the only problems you have is trying to, you know, when it comes off the platform and it printed right. I mean, this stuff takes forever to print on an FDM uh, printer um, if you don't want to print really ugly. And most of the prints are done at uh, 0 0.1 millimeter resolution. It's not a crazy resolution. It's really, it's it's kind of average. And the prints that came out of it were pretty okay. Um, so I really wanted to keep, keep keep the cost down of this. I didn't want to, you know, order all that stuff in Shapeways and pay like a million bucks for it. I'm sorry, I'm just really poor. And I can't afford that. So, and I also like the kind of the kind of environmental aspect of this because I mean it's all PLA, which is uh, which is sort of bio, bio sort of biodegradable. Um, so yeah, just. I basically, I basically went crazy once I knew all the constraints and just did things. Like I have this this fern here, which uh, kind of have you ever played with array modifiers? Like array modifiers and empty objects. Like yeah, you have an array that's uh, that's using the empty as the duplication source. And I just thought, okay, well you know all know this thing like when you when you move the empty, everything kind of goes like whoop, and if you scale it down, everything kind of goes like <coughs> small. And then, if you rotate it, it kind of makes these awesome spirals, right? Right? And uh, there's this little thing here that's uh, just an array modifier. And uh, there's like a, 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 a nylon kite string that's in the middle. It's a double strand just for uh, making it less bendable. It's still bendy, kind of, it bends in itself. But uh, there's just two kite strings. And if I pull one of these, just curls up, and it's all just an array modifier. And if I can have, <laughs> right, if I can have four of these, and I ha can have all the strings going into the center, and I have a gear motor attached attached to, uh, to the middle, that's pretty strong. I mean, like uh, tw uh, 12 kilograms should be enough probably to to pull this thing. Uh, obviously, there is also going to be fern leaves uh, that's sticking out here. Um, yeah, that that should probably work. Um, Also found out it's pretty cool to print things on the flatbed. Uh, the printer we have is uh, uh, has a heated bed, so it's really easy to peel these things off. And if you peel them off while while they're cooling down, they kind of show uh, make this little leaf shape. Uh, I mean this this little curvature here, which kind of is also really interesting if you combine it with the idea of the fern. So I have to print more of these uh, leaf things. So this is currently what I have. Um, 
It's not. I actually just did, uh, put all of this on my floor uh, three, four days ago, and I thought, okay, well, it's not. It's probably not enough, so I probably have to print more. I have one more month left, so that should be okay. Um, but uh, I, I kind of uh, made an estimate, and it's about 800 individual parts printed, which is kind of insane. Um, anyway, so yeah, these. That's just a close-up of one of these parts. I actually, I actually brought one of the plants here. Um, it's again on a mechanical level. It's really, really simple, and also on a programming level, it's incredibly moronic. I mean, I I didn't do anything really. I just just to have, well, just to see something uh, that you've designed in Blender, and even on a most basic level, it moves. And uh, you can you can just one day come up with something in your head, and uh, be able to you know outline that in Blender and then just print it out, and uh, bring it into the real world. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> and more so if you if you think about it, I mean, all of this stuff. That, that I've used to make this, and this is nothing uh, nothing compared to what other people do with this, but this is open source. This is the power of open source. I mean, open source is pretty awesome, right? It's, all of us know, know that kind of stuff. Uh, none of this, this would have been possible with all the projects that have contributed to, you know, all the people that have worked on getting 3D printing to work, uh, all these programs that uh, make working with this kind of stuff, uh, a breeze. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And thank you, thanks to all of these people, and thank you for watching my presentation. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Is it working? Yeah, we have to speak. Go to the next talk. There's no time for questions. No, there's no time for questions so I'm you can talk to him all the time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna questions you could do in the corridor. Vasily? Nice to meet you. I think this microphone is a bit louder. This one is a bit. Uh, yes. uh, hello, 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 hello. Wow, oh, wow, that that's better. Do you want to speak with uh, this or with this? Is this working? Yes. Take this. Yeah, turn this off. All right.